Hello, this is Brett, and today we're going to talk about if-else statements in C. So to begin, I have my terminal here on the left, and I'm going to create a new file called if underscore else dot C. And using the touch command we've learned about, that creates the file. And over here in Atom, I will open that up and begin my program. So like all C programs, we'll start with our main function uh, by saying int main void. And the first, I want to show you the syntax for an if statement. So where we get into an if statement is we say if, and then we have some type of a condition here. And if that condition is true, then we will execute this code. And if that is not true, we have an else condition, and then we will uh, execute this code. So. This is just a branching logic that says if, says if something is true, then we'll go down this code path, this branch, uh, otherwise or else go down this code branch. So the, the thing here to understand is what are these conditions here? And these are, these are Boolean values here, meaning they are they're true or they're false. They're ones or they're zeros. So if we say, for example, just to show you how this works. If zero, then we'll do a printf. Uh, you are true. Uh, so if the, if the thing is true, it will go down that code path. And then if the thing is false, we'll say you are false. Uh, and now to use printf, as we've learned before, we need to include standard io.h. So we get that. So I'll save that, and then in the terminal here, I will say make if else, and we will run if else. So it says you are false. So that's saying zero is interpreted as false. So let's do one. If one, then we'll run that again. It says you are true. Okay. So let's come up with a, a variable now, or a condition in here which we can um, use. So let's create a new integer called age. And then we will assign age to be the value of 35. So then here we can say if age equals 35, then we'll go down this path. Otherwise, we're going to go down this path. So if we run this, it says you are true because age does in fact equal 35. Now if we were to say age is 30, let's say it's 10, but we're checking if age is 35, we run this again, and it says you are false. That's because the code came down and step by step we went to line 5 which said age equals 10, then we came down to line 9 and it does this comparison saying uh, does age double equal 35, and this is this Boolean expression that results in um, a true or a false, or a zero or a one, and that says, uh, you know, in this case, that is false, so we go down to this next block, we skip this all together, come down to the next else statement, and then we say, you are false. So let's dive into a little bit about these Boolean expressions, and uh, to show an example, let's delete this code for a minute, and I'll show you some syntax that may look a little bit funny, but it will get you, it'll give you the right idea. So we'll call this Boolean, and we'll say one equals two. And then we'll come here and say, we'll use a printf to get the value out to the console. So we'll say printf you uh, Boolean is, and then we'll see what the value of Boolean is here. So this is saying, well, here, let me run it first, and I'll show you what it's saying. So it says Boolean is zero, if you look here on the left. And that's because what's happened here, you can think of this as maybe having parentheses over it, around it. This got evaluated saying one double equals, saying, hey, does one equal two, yes or no? And in this case, no, it does not. So zero being false in C here assigns the value of zero to boolean, which is an integer, and then we use our print statements like we've learned before, and it says boolean is 
and then that says zero. That's why when we do our if statement um, and we say one equals two, this gets evaluated and results in a zero in the same way that this gets evaluated and with our assignment operator here gets assigned to boolean. So that's why if we come here then and we do that same logic we had before, we say printf you are true else printf you are false. Come back and set this up and I'd like you to go through these and set up these tests so you can see this working. Um, and play around with this to try to understand Boolean expressions here. So if zero print you are true, which that should not, and it will go print uh, you are false. And uh, for the sake of clarity, I'll put that, that uh, new line value there so we can break this up. So Boolean is zero, you are false. Now let's go back in here. That's because that's zero. Let's put Boolean in here as our expression as our value here and let's run that again uh, so it says uh, boolean is zero because of that now you are false because it came up with zero and then it went down to this branch so let's change this and say two equals two let's run that again that should return true so down here when we run it, it says boolean is one and you are true. So this here is called a Boolean expression and it's an expression that results in a true or a false, a one or a zero. Uh, so to, give, to go through a few more of them we could say two is greater than two. Is that true or false? Well if we run it again we'll see Boolean is zero, you are false because that resulted in a false which got assigned to this integer zero. We printed out zero uh, here we came, it says if boolean it's looking for a 1, it will execute. If 0, it comes down here. Okay, let's do another one. So let's say 2 is greater than or equal to 2. Well, we know that that is true. And so we run this and we see boolean is 1. That's the value and you are true. Okay, so going through some more, we can also say less than 2. 2 is less than 2. Boolean is zero, you are false, right? Because that evaluated to false. And if we say two is less than or equal to two, that is true. So some of the, the common Boolean values, uh, we had uh, equals using the double equal sign, meaning they are uh, the same. Um, and don't, don't get that uh, confused with the single equal sign, which does not mean equal, it means assignment, um, as we've talked about before. And so this value is getting assigned to the Boolean uh, integer. But so double equals, we have greater, greater than, we have greater than or equal, we have less than, we have uh, less than or equal, just to name a few of them. So all right, so that's the if else statement uh, combined with some Boolean expressions. But just understand Boolean, again, has two values, zero or one, it's true or it's false, and that's how the if statement works. Now we can make our if statement uh, a little bit more complicated um, by first we could put in here two equals two. Let's see, let's do two equals three. And we'll go back uh, here. So if we say else if, now we can put in another condition in here, which is uh, another Boolean expression here, which is 2 equals 4. Uh, and then we say else if, and we can continue to chain these else ifs all the way down with as many expressions as we want. And I'm just, I'm making up false it's, you know, expressions here just for fun, just to show you the syntax. Um, and you can continue to chain these together. So if, else if, and then a condition here, else if, and then another condition here, all the way down, and then you can end it with an else. And so this is saying, 
If this condition is true, do this, which is everything in between these two curly braces. Else, if this condition is true, do everything between these two curly braces. Else, if this condition is true, do everything between these curly braces. Else, you know, else no condition, else if none of those are true, come and do this condition right here. So if we use an example we used before, like we're checking the age. So let's say we assign age is 15. Um, and just for debugging, we'll say age is, and we'll print out the age here. And then we'll say if age equals 10, say you are 10. If age equals 11, you know, you could print something out here. Wow, you're getting bigger. Um, if age equals 12, you know, we could, we could print something, you know, out again here, like, uh, you know, we'll do something silly. You're almost a teenager. You know, otherwise, else, this final else, say, you know, these are silly examples, but it's good just to teach you the concept. Else, congratulations. So if we run this, what's going to happen? Well, age is going to be compared to 10, which will be false, so it'll skip that section. Else, age will be compared to 11, which is false, so it'll skip that section. Age will be compared to 12, which 12 does not equal 15, so that's false. It'll skip that section, and we get to our final else here, and it will say printf congratulations. So let's just run that for fun. And it looks like I have a syntax error here. And I forgot my semicolon here up on age 15, so we'll run that again. It says age is 15, congratulations, and it came all the way down here. Now, you don't have to have a final else statement. It's good practice to have one, but let's say we took that off and we ran this again. We don't get any printfs because this came, it was false. This else if was false, this else if was false. So it gets down to the end and then it's finished. You know, So we should be good programmers and hit return zero uh, like we've talked about before. But that is how an if else statement works. So uh, you can use in here any Boolean expression inside of this condition. It just needs to result after it gets evaluated in a one or a zero. Uh, and so you uh, you know you could come through this and, and play with that. But that should give you an idea on an if else. There's a lot of useful ways that you can use that. Um, so play around with that. Let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.